The following episode contains approximately 815 spoilers for all seasons and episodes of Lost. You have been warned. Very solemn welcome to Lost the Plot. It's the show where two Irish lads usually talk a lot of shite about Lost. But today, uh, you know, we, 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 we've something a little different for you. My name is Dave. I'm joined, as always, by my wonderful co-host, Ado. Ado, it's been a while. How are you? I'm pretty good. How are you doing? Not too bad. Not too it's been bad. a while, right? It has been, yeah. I mean, we had a lovely big chat in the 45 minutes before we started recording this podcast but you missed some goal listeners let me tell you so yeah we, we're here today you probably noticed from the title and description of this episode that this isn't a normal episode this isn't us coming back for the second half of season two uh we just wanted to talk about the future of the podcast uh get you guys involved possibly with with the direction we take it but uh Needless to say, things have uh, life circumstances have changed and uh, things have gotten a little bit more complicated and messy in our lives. Ado, do you want to tell uh, the listeners what's going on with you? Basically, life circumstances, as Dave has just said, have forced us into a position of doing an old yeller on this podcast, (laughs) bringing it out into the backyard and shooting it in the fucking head. (laughs) Not because we want to. But because we have to, so yeah. lost the plot is lying, you know, post lobotomy in a hospital bed, and we're taking a pillow, saying, "I can't, I can't bear to see it like this," <laughs> and uh, and smothering the life out of it. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a great image as well. Thank you for that, yeah. Dave. Uh, yeah, great a, imagination. One flew, one flew over the cuckoo's nest. No imagination there. So, so, but would you like to get into the specifics of these life circumstances, Ada? I've been trying to lead you down this path. Yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> you've been avoiding. It. <laughs> so, if you've been an avid listener of Lost the Plot and you've really been looking forward to us coming back for the second half of season two, I'm sorry, but you've got me to blame for discontinuing <laughs> this podcast because two pretty big things are happening in my life at the moment. One, I'm moving to a different country. More specifically to the middle of bumfuck nowhere in this country where internet connection is very difficult to get a hold of. Mm. And the second thing, also connected to why I'm moving, is that I'm going to be a dad, apparently. Let me offer my on-air congratulations. This is this is amazing news. I mean, it sucks for the podcast, but we're gonna there's gonna be a lost the plot baby on this earth. Thank you very You're much. You're going to be a dad. Congratulations. Yeah, that's the plan. Um the girlfriend is currently four and a half months pregnant. She would like to stay pregnant um for <laughs> for the foreseeable future. <laughs> okay now. Yeah, I mean this is fantastic news. Like I said, it's 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 a death knell for the podcast, but I mean, you're going to be a dad. And I let me say that I really do think, and I'm not just saying this, I think that you're going to be a fantastic father. I'm super excited for you. I can't wait to meet your kid. I'm going to try and and fly to uh Ireland or France or wherever is convenient, like next year sometime, to meet this little this little fucking creator. But uh, uh, how are you feeling about it? Yeah. Uh, so... what, what, what's what's the anticipation of being a father like? Well, I've envisioned myself being a dad for like the last ten years, maybe slightly more than that. Ever since I hit the age of twenty, for some reason, even mm. when I was in college, I always sort of imagined, you know, what life was going to be like after college you know what am i going to do what job am i going to have what's my family situation going to be do i want to get married do i want to have kids so do i want to get divorced (laughs) (laughs) so yeah been married been there done that nicked the t-shirt um and now i've decided to go down the having kids route i say i say decided we didn't so much decide to have a kid it was a bit of an oopsie baby but hey (laughs) no no baby baby was always um was always planned kind of 
yeah just just like just like not a solid plan just to kind of if it happens it happens right it's pretty oh, yeah. uh, my ma has told me before but that, that that's exactly how i came to be was like uh, you know without and now that i think about the details of that gross but like she was like eh, we weren't planning on having a kid but we just weren't against it and i think it's the same for you right I think we were slightly more leaning in the camp of wanting to have a kid. Oh, okay. okay. Right? But for some reason, we'd never... Okay, this is going to make us sound like absolute dipshits, but we never really discussed the logistics of having a kid. <laughs> Very few we just, people do, I bet. <laughs> yeah, we, we, I mean, it's kind of like, you know, someone who lives in a shoebox of an apartment and decides to get a pet gorilla or something. It's like, hey, I brought this home. <laughs> Don't know how we're going to care for it, but yeah. yeah. Cross that bridge when we come to it. We have come to it, by the way. So time to cross it. <laughs> yes, and that bridge is leading me to France, apparently. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so so for those of you familiar with the Lost the Plot Expanded Universe, your uh, your lovely girlfriend Mary is carrying your child. At least I'm assuming so. I assume it's her. No, she's actually <laughs> no, she's not carrying the child. She's just going to perform the ritual so that it can break the surface of the earth and crawl out of hell eventually <laughs> in about another four and a half months. Uh, this is we we actually we prophesized this child on a relatively recent episode of Lost the Plot. I remember sort of speaking hypothetically about you having a baby that speaks French with a Midlands of Ireland accent. Do you remember that? So <laughs> can I make a full confession? Yeah. Go back and listen to our last recorded episode. I knew she was pregnant while we were recording. Oh, uh, you did. Yeah, that was the one with Noel. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I could do is was it that episode where we spoke about it? I can't they're all running together for me now. I don't think so because it was so early. Like we hadn't announced it to anybody. I don't think because you know you just don't announce a pregnancy no, within the course. first twelve months. The first twelve months is well and solidly in the woods. You know mm-hmm. anything can happen. That's the highest risk period of time. And then once you get 12 out of months, twelve weeks. <laughs> It's, like, this really is Satan spawn. If, it's, <laughs> nah, it's if an, there's a if there's a first twelve months, <laughs> twelve months. I think that's the gestation period for is it a gorilla or not? Not I said gorilla. No elephant. I think elephant, elephant. Yeah, yeah. I think that sounds right. Or is it thirteen or fourteen? I think it's slightly longer than year. But anyway, um. So yes, I'm going to be the dad to a little. Uh, as I've been referring to it, I started referring to it as junior because we don't know whether it'll be boy or girl yet. Mm-hmm. Um, and when we do find out, we won't be telling anybody for reasons I will, for the time being, keep to myself. Of course. But I had started referring to it as Junior, mm-hmm. right? Okay, so, you know, just in conversation, you know, oh, when Junior comes along, you know, he'll obviously learn French and he'll learn English as well. And my girlfriend, Mary, she hates me calling it Junior. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> fine. So I've started referring to it as the half breed. <laughs> <laughs> or the crossbreed, either are. How does she take to that? Yeah, she's not too happy about that either, <laughs> to be honest. But I've made my bed. I'm going to lie in it. That reminds me. I think you'll enjoy this. I uh, I'm in a, a political reading group. There's a there's a woman in that reading group. Her name is Anna, lovely woman, and she has got a child who identifies as non-binary, and so she refers to this child neither as my son or my daughter, but my spawn. <laughs> which i think My is wonderful and, uh, and that's that's not uh like derogatory that's the agreed upon term between them both you know oh it's, okay yeah, yeah yeah so which i think is wonderful she's uh yeah she seems like a great man she's you know for woman. a hot second there, i was thinking what like how how would i react in that situation if my child came to me and said they didn't want me to refer to them as male or female and do you know what term i came up with just now half breed <laughs> my, my child yeah yeah, that works. Or kid. <laughs> this know. led to a conversation in my reading group about like uh, gender neutral terms for, you know, I was like, I was like, what? So for brother and sister there, and someone also identifies as non-binary in the group. They said, um, you just say sibling, and I'm like, oh yeah, of yeah. course. And then they were like, they were like aunt and uncle. That's the difficult one. And then I proposed my mother's brother. Or sorry, God damn it! My mother's, my sibling. mother's sibling, yeah, my right. father's sibling, and they're <laughs> and <laughs> the non-binary person in my group. Uh, their name is Trey. They said, "Ugh, I'd rather just be misgendered," <laughs> 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 which I thought was hilarious. <laughs> Can I give you my favorite gender-neutral term that I've ever heard? Please, you might you might have heard this, so please shout it out if you've heard it. But the gender-neutral version of a sugar daddy or a sugar mama. <laughs> no, go on. Glucose Guardian. <laughs> Fantastic. 
I right? I love it. I need to get me a glucose guardian. Oh, don't we all, buddy? Uh, so, so I mentioned Mary. How is Mary taken to pregnancy? If, if you don't mind discussing it on the podcast, of course, this is very much yours and her business. But listen, I do not mind discussing on the podcast one bit. She does, but she's not here right now, so fuck her. <laughs> and she doesn't listen to this. She never supported this podcast. <laughs> and let's be honest, this I... podcast was around before she was. So <laughs> I think she, uh, I think she got pregnant just as a covert way to fucking. <laughs> To put the this. final nail in this. <laughs> yeah, the only the only recording opportunities I ever had to do this was uh, while she's at work. She never minded the fact that I had the outlook, the outlook, the outlet. Sorry, mm. leave that in the edit. I don't give a fuck. Uh, don't cut <laughs> that. But she never really minded as long as she wasn't here because I'm so fucking loud that my voice vibrates the walls when I'm projecting <laughs> and gesticulating here on on camera. But in answer to your question, how she's taken to pregnancy, um, first three months. Suffered horrible, horrible nausea, uh, like constant, course. constant. Um, I actually know another woman who I think is 28 weeks pregnant now, hmm. and she's still suffering really, really oh, bad that's rough. with the sickness. Mary, it was gone by the by like week 13 slash 14, right? Mm. And other than that, she's like, she's doing pretty well. Uh, she's put on a little bit of pregnancy weight. So that's obviously pl- fucking with her head a little bit. She is also though, healthy. She, she's also proven to me that God exists and he's laughing at me. <laughs> and what I mean by that is so when I say God exists and he's laughing at me in that order, her boobs have gotten huge, but I'm not allowed fucking touch them anymore. <laughs> Cuz they're uh, too tender. Oh, like I mean like I'll give you an example. Like I, I, if I elbow her boob or something i mean they're, 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 they've actually gotten big enough now where they they genuinely just sort of get in the way every now and again yeah so if you brush past her or whatever oh yeah a simple brushing past while we're while she's exiting the kitchen i'm going in and she just goes too small too small which is the french word for gentle gen- or <laughs> gently gently right the word gently is very difficult to, to it's not difficult for her it's just it's not as natural for the most of form as doucement apparently mm-hmm. so yeah i hear doucement all the fucking time. She's going to fucking hate that I said that on air, but she doesn't <laughs> listen to this, so whatever. Well, congrats again, man. I mean, I'm delighted for you. And, uh, you know, I hope uh, there there might be some way that we can we can share updates along the way about that. Uh, do you want to talk about the future of the podcast or should we get into emails first? Because we have a few emails that we're just going to wrap up uh, that we never got to read them out. So we're going to read them. Should we, should we do that next? As you wish. Let's do it. Yeah. Well, we'll talk about the future of Lost the Plot in a bit because this is not necessarily dead forever. I know we've been speaking about it like that. But uh, first off, yeah. It, Wait. It's... Dave, are we going into the emails now? Oh, shit. Should we, uh, should we do email music? Cue the music! All right, listeners, so one of the purposes of recording this particular special bonus episode of Lost the Plot is to use Dave's terminology to really put a bow on the end of this era of Lost the Plot. Mm -hmm. And with that, there's a little bit of housekeeping to be done, a little bit of, you know, a couple of things that we need to really finish off. And one of those is our listener emails. So in the however many months it's been since we last recorded, what was it, like two? Yeah, feels like a yeah. lot longer. It's, yeah, it's been a while. It's because we we top loaded and then we took a while off and recorded the episode with Noel sort of much closer to release than the rest of them. Right. But like, but like based on that schedule, you know, we we recorded most of the first half of season two. I keep saying the first half, the entirety of season two now. Yeah. Uh, we recorded we, we recorded most of that. You know, it well in advance so that there was nothing for people to react to while we were recording because the episodes hadn't been released. Uh, so 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 we did get a couple of emails sort of in our downtime, or I guess just after season two started releasing. Right. So with that, we've ended up with a handful of emails in our inbox that we're now going to go through now. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to start off with one that was sent to us on the 2nd of November of last <laughs> year. We, we had, let me tell you, we have one more email. It was sent on the 3rd of November. <laughs> Shit. So it was a two day fucking landslide. <laughs> so on the 2nd of November, our longtime friend of the po- podcast, Paul H., writes in with the following. 
Yeah, so so just to remind listeners, Paul H uh, is famously the only person that's ever emailed in that we don't personally know. <laughs> <laughs> and here's 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 uh, part two. So shout out to Paul. Thanks for emailing in, man. So he writes, Hey, lads, since I represent half of your listeners, I figured I'd write in to say welcome back. Okay, side note, you little bitch. Okay. <laughs> only we are allowed to make fun of the fact we only have two <laughs> listeners. Okay. Back in your box, Paul H. Anyway, oh, I continue. I'm here for it. I continue. I did have a couple of questions for you. First, I was wondering what your thoughts were on Johnny Locke's statement, Boone was a sacrifice the island demanded. Oh, damn. I ask because I'm wondering if your thoughts and opinions might change at the end of this season. Side note, they don't. (laughs) I continue. Second, during the beginning of episode four, you say you put out good content. Could you please provide a link to this other content (laughs) so we can check it out? Thanks. Signed, Paul. All right. Uh, All right. I love getting roasted by an emailer. Right. Like we we made our bed here, to be honest. Like all the self deprecation completely invites that, and and I I for one welcome it. <laughs> all right, listen here, you little shit. <laughs> Try to put on your dad hat. <laughs> we slave over a hot keyboard week in, week out, and have done since the <laughs> since what, like fucking two years ago? Oh well, September twenty one. So okay, yeah, so just over a year. A year. And a half. Year and a half, for the last year and a half, slaving over a hot keyboard, week in, week out, to produce top-notch, quality, pristinely edited content for your fucking ass, okay? (laughs) There are those born to drink the wine and those born to make it, and you sit there sipping your Cabernet Sauvignon, sir. (laughs) How dare you? I bite my thumb. But thanks for the email. <laughs> yeah, just for the email, Paul. I, I really liked it, actually. Uh, okay, intro- I didn't actually expect it to be discussing loss today, <laughs> funny enough. But Paul did pose a question there, and we'd be remiss if we didn't answer it. So he, he asked about Locke. Read the quote back to me. Was it Boone was a sacrifice the island demanded? You got it, word for word. There we go. Do you have any thoughts on that? Um, To me, okay, so this is just off the top of my head. I have not read this email since last November. I forgot what it had said because I have no short-term memory. So me reading this back, I'm just going off, you know, I'm on the seat of my pants here. My initial reading of this, Boone was a sacrifice the island demanded. This is Locke doing some sort of a personification of the island. He's he's positing that the island has some sort of will or agency, and therefore some sort of, I don't know, higher... Agenda? Part, like, yeah. Mm. That's not where I was going with this, but that fits so much better. Yeah, like a preordained sort of, you know, uh, I don't know. Uh, I have two words to sum up this statement. Boo was a sacrifice the island demanded. And those two words are too soon. <laughs> like, I don't remember exactly when Locke says this quote. He's already said it in the episodes we've covered, right? He says it in fucking season one, episode 24, Exodus part two. Oh, so there we go. I, I stand by it then, too soon. I mean... Boone was barely fucking was he even in the ground? He was he was he was still fucking warm when Locke says this. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> have have a bit attacked. We talked about how Shannon was like dicking down about a week and a half after her brother died. Yeah, this is a uh... Hey, I do not judge Shannon for, you know, getting her old filled just yeah. after her brother died. You do what you gotta to feel better when you're stranded on a desert island for what looks to be the rest of your fucking life, okay? True. But yeah, I mean, it's it's just kind of classic lock. Like, I, I, I agree with you. I guess I don't have much more to say about what you said about it. I was just about to ask Paul to write in to give us his thoughts. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, write on in, Paul. I'm sure we'll respond yeah. eventually. <laughs> yeah. I have a second email. Thank you for the email, Paul. We, we really appreciate it. And uh, thanks for thanks for listening all this time. Just what I think of this really quickly. Um, You know that every time somebody sends an email to us, they automatically get an out of office response. That says, thank you for sending an email. Due to the mass quantity of emails that we get, it's very likely we'll read yours out on the next episode. <laughs> yeah, so about that. <laughs> Sorry, Paul. It has regularly taken us like fucking months to read out emails. Yeah, that's that's those are scheduling issues. It's, it's still the next episode that we record, technically. 
Uh, actually, we had these emails when we recorded our last episode, but because Noel was on, that's why we decided not to read them. Didn't feel right. Speaking of guests, before I read the next email, uh, I would just like to acknowledge uh, a very... <laughs> I'm, I'm so I'm, sorry. Someone I'm going to call a great man and a patient man. Who who knows if he even still listens, but um, d- devoted listeners might remember that at, towards the end of season one, we ran a hashtag cans with Jorge with Jorge. campaign where we got people to, uh, you know, to either tweet the hashtag cans with Jorge or comment on Jorge Garcia's Instagram posts, uh, encouraging him to come on our podcast and drink tins with us. I actually recently found out and I texted you about this, you know, that Jorge Garcia is one of the richest actors in Hollywood. Apparently he, he often makes like the top 50 richest actors list. Uh, apparently he's a dab hand at the fucking investing. Oh. Like he doesn't, he doesn't actually work all that much, or like not as much, not more than any other actor. But he that just, man is living the dream. Yeah, he absolutely like he is fucking loaded. He's a he, he's he did capitalism right. So fair play to him, I suppose. He owns he owns like a chain of burger restaurants and everything. Like he's a not fried chicken restaurants now. <laughs> Wouldn't that be I'm great? So, I'm sorry, low hanging fruit. Nah, I mean, it's it's a, it's a lost reference. It's still a lost podcast for now. Um, but but I just want to acknowledge that there were there were a couple of our friends and family members who very kindly participated in that uh, contest, if you want to call it. There was one person, <laughs> and maybe maybe I one shouldn't man. have revealed. Maybe I shouldn't have revealed that he was the only person we didn't know who participated. But one man uh, named Jerry, who 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 did the hashtag cans with Jorge. I believe he did it on on Jorge Garcia's one of his Instagram posts, right? Yeah. And he addressed him and he said, "You should go on Lost the Plot to drink cans." Hashtag cans with Jorge. Jerry, fair play to you. We uh, we really appreciate that. We reached out to him. We asked him if he would like to join us for a season two episode, and he said he'd like to join us for the episode, the hunting party. The hunting party, yeah. Which is actually two episodes after the last one we covered, and we had every intention of getting Jerry on. Uh, and then I got my missus knocked up. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. The baby Sorry. got in the way, yes. So, uh, but Ado has very graciously agreed to name the baby after Jerry. So, <laughs> <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> anyway, shout out to our boy Jerry. Uh, like we said, we really appreciate you participating in the contest. Sorry, you never got your episode. Fucking, if you ever want to get have a chat with us about it on social media and private, we'd be happy to do that. Speaking of, I love the term you coined earlier on the expanded Lost the Plot universe, the lore <laughs> yeah. behind Lost the Plot. Um, it's a running joke that we only have two listeners. Well, you've just heard both their names now, Paul H and Jerry. That's hey. the- <laughs> there we go. That's the big reveal. God damn, yeah, that that's perfect for our uh, uh, pseudo finale episode. Yeah. Uh, okay. So before we get to the to the business at hand about the future of this podcast, I have one more email to read out. I am cold reading this one. I saw it come in. It's from a good friend of mine. Her name is Lisa. I saw this come in. And I decide. I think you've pre-screened this one, right? But I have never read this. I intentionally decided not to read it. Yeah, I've read through it once, and uh, it's nice. Yeah, I, I'm guessing you don't remember the content all that well, considering not we got it on the third of November. <laughs> I remember all how right. I felt reading it, not what it said. Yeah, yeah, okay. So uh, I'm just gonna launch into it. This is from Lisa. Uh, so Lisa is also Irish. She says, "Well, lads, what's the crack?" Well, lads. So let me dive right in by saying I didn't watch Lost at all until this potty came out. Smiley face. I had always heard about it, but it didn't seem like my kind of thing at the time. Then when it was ending, I heard everyone giving out stink about how shite and nonsensical it got. So I really didn't have any interest then. Fast forward numerous years and my old buddy Davo starts a podcast. I was in the market for a new show to watch. So I gave Lost a whirl knowing that it was going to get stupid. So I had low expectations. Good attitude to go in with, I would say. Yeah, because it does get stupid. Lisa continues. I was really enjoying it. Until I really wasn't. (laughs) (laughs) Oh man, nonsensical is an understatement. I couldn't follow it at all anymore. And I ended up abandoning it in the last season. So I'm just going to let you guys tell me what happens when you get to that in the potty. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, Lisa. Uh, I will. I will go on a limb here and say, eh, maybe you don't need to watch the end of it. I mean, not as much as you don't need to watch the end of something like Game of Thrones. But uh, oh yeah, do we want to take the time to opine on the end of Lost at some point during this episode? Or eh, you know, we'll get to it if we have time. 
Lisa continues, Johnny Boy Locke was always my favorite and goddamn, his story is so harsh. I really wanted him to kill Jack. What an, what an annoying weasel arse he is. <laughs> She's not wrong. <laughs> no disagreements here, yeah. My question for you boys is, oh God, they always have fucking questions, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like we encouraged it. <laughs> nah, nah. My question for you boys is, as followers of the show from the beginning, were you completely butthurt that it just meandered off into gobbledygook? At least I had the forewarning. Okay, so that is actually a good opportunity to discuss the, uh, the end of the episode. We'll get to that question in a second. The email continues, and I just want to finish it out. So Lisa says, So I wanted to share my theory for the series as a whole, and maybe I'm right because I never finished it, is that everyone on Oceanic Flight 815 had been picked at random and monitored most of their lives. All their lives mingled together on the flight, and the people who had been monitoring them purposely crashed the plane and observed their reactions. Dun, dun, dun. That's That's not flourish added by me. Lisa's written that. The people on the flight were selected to be part of a new reality TV show unbeknownst to them of course just like in a Truman show fashion so the creators of the show threw random crap at them to increase audience interest of viewers such as the random polar bear the smoke monster and the computer they all freak out over the island is just a giant tv set walt is in on it too and that's why he's a little creeper and shows up soaking wet randomly to freak the others out the flashbacks we see are the hidden cameras set up by the crew as they were monitoring their lives for years before the crash. What do you think? Am I close? Any comments, Ado? I'm going to say that, like, that's text. Like, that's meta. That Like, that's not even subtext. That That's meta text. What, what do you mean by dis- that? As in, that's exactly what the show is, but on a meta level. All the random shit is the writers of the show trying to maintain audience interest in it. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Obviously, as you and I both know, that theory is not correct. No. Um, I mean, the first half is like, right, it's just it's just the whole Truman Show part that's that's inaccurate. Listen, as far as lost theories go, I have heard much worse. Yeah. <laughs> much, yeah. much worse. I, I think it's hilarious that Walt being in on a bit. Like the only the only person in on it is just this random kid. Who, they, I, I who think, happened to be the son of one of the contestants. I think my favorite theory of loss I ever heard to try and explain everything is that the island used to be inhabited by an ancient people who worshipped a canine deity, which has now returned to punish humanity in the form of Vincent. <laughs> that, was, that was my all-time favorite. That, like, like, like to explain all the supernatural hat. shit. Yeah, because Vincent's kind of like Angela Lansbury from Murder, She Wrote. Every time there's a murder, she happens to fucking be there, and that, and no one thinks that's us. Vincent <laughs> is always there. Like, just in case anyone's not aware, Vincent the dog survives to the very end of Lost. Vincent canonically does not die throughout the entirety of the events of the TV show. Where was I going with that? <laughs> <laughs> he was the he's the dog deity. That oh yeah, the, yeah, the the, yeah. the canine deity. I can't remember. Is Vincent in the Flash sideways in season six? I don't remember. Anyway, there's still some more emails, so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep reading this here. I kept hearing about the theory that they're in purgatory, but nah. I think they're just stars of a TV show made by deranged sadists. Again, I've heard worse. Yep. Forgiveness, please, must be said in the Simpsons voice. Lisa Lisa writes. Okay, I'm actually I'm not I'm not gonna say it in the Simpsons voice because it's a uh, <laughs> that that. Lion is by a racial caricature of a Japanese person, and I don't think it's a good look for me to do that. <laughs> oh, I have no idea what's, what what we're talking about. Yeah, it, it, so Lisa and I are both big Simpsons fans, so we make lots of Simpsons reference together. This is the uh, episode where the mob are fighting the Yakuza on the Simpsons lawn, and a one of the Yakuza agents smashes through the window, and he goes in a stereotypical Japanese accent. He says, "Forgiveness, please." And the, bows. Yeah, and he bows back outside. I remember yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So Lisa says, forgiveness, please, as this email is long, but I'll leave off with one more thing. Watching this show kept reminding me of this hilarious review by Ask a Ninja about Pirates of the Caribbean 2. I'll leave a link at the end for you to enjoy. The whole review can be translated to Lost, minus the pirates. 
but I'll quote the best part. Okay, good, because I, I don't think we're going to make be able to watch this on the air. I'll Not watch it after. Chance. But So the quote is, they loaded about four or five different screenplays into a shotgun and then pulled the trigger and then sent somebody around, like a PA or something, to piece random words together and hand that to the actors. And even that script was lost about halfway through shooting and then the, direct, the director just made it up every day. <laughs> okay, hang on. Which Pirates of the Caribbean is she referencing? Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean 2. Dead Man's Chest? I don't think I've seen it. But this is, yeah, this was Ask a Ninja's uh, opinion of this movie. Okay. St- uh, very brief, strong opinions on that. False. L- Pirates of the Caribbean 2, Dead Man's Chest is a phenomenal, tight, whole movie. It's incredible. Yeah? Okay. I also, don't, I, I, I also disagree with that characterization of Lost. They definitely were making it up as they go along, but I would give it more... Oh, yeah. Credit writing credit than that for the most part, you know what I mean? It's not like a, it's not a badly written show for the most part. There are a few stink stinker episodes, and it, it falls apart at the end. But like the writing is strong for most of the run. Well, hang on a minute now. I mean, don't get me wrong. Lost can do no wrong in my in my eyes. But like, I mean, there's a reason I started a podcast about it. But the thing with Lost is, in order to be able to write a good narrative, you have to know beginning, middle, and end so that you can Mm, plan accordingly. The problem with Lost is you have incredible writers who don't know where the end point is and they're just going and going and going because without knowing how this shit is supposed to end Mm -hmm. or when it's going to end. That's true. There's they're competent writers though in that they write good individual episodes as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. They can do they can do beginning, middle, end for a, an episode quite well. But yeah, you write the overarching story. Anyway, we'll get to our thoughts on that. So Lisa, she she quotes that the director just made it up every day. She then says, "And that's lost, baby." P.S. Maybe they called it lost because they intended people to completely lost trying to follow it. Tee Lisa ends by saying, "Keep on rocking forever, forever, forever," which is another Simpsons reference. I know, Lisa. Thank you very much for your email, Lisa. It was wonderful. She's also linked to the, uh, the Ask a Ninja review for Pirates of the Caribbean 2. Uh, okay, yeah, great. So awesome email. Thank you for emailing in. Uh, always great to hear from, a, from a, a, a treasured friend. So the question in the middle there was, as followers of the show from the beginning, were you completely butthurt that it just meandered off into gobbledygook? Do you want to answer that first? Um, I wasn't butthurt at all. I mean, while I was watching Lost, I could sense it. I could feel it that the writers didn't know where this was going to go, but they just kept on writing anyway. So mm. by the time we got to the very end of the series and I was able to step back and see the whole show, the whole narrative, the whole plot, everything from you know a more distanced perspective, looking at it as a whole, I was actually incredibly impressed with what they were able to do given the fact that they were just slaves to the viewership. You know, as long Mm. as it kept getting views, they kept tacking on another season and another season. So, yeah, I liked it because of the gobbledygook from the the (laughs) beginning. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think that while I was watching it, and I watched it week to week, unlike you, you sort of, you fucking mainlined it after it finished airing, but I watched it week to week from the very beginning. And I was a young man. I was I was a teenager, right? When Lost ended, I was uh, let me see, I would have just turned nineteen, right? So so mm. it, it it accompanied through my accompanied me through my entire teenage years. Basically, yeah, I was thirteen when it started, so thirteen to nineteen. I did not nearly have the sort of critical uh, mind that I or, or, or knowledge that I have now. Do you know what I mean? I've I've watched I've attended University of YouTube for film criticism, right? Like I've watched a lot of video essays. I found they've they've helped me to be more critical, and not to say that I don't like enjoy things for just the sake of enjoying them, but like we we, now, we talk. You now understand the language of movie a little bit. Yeah, right? exactly. And we talk about writing and story structure on here. I find I find that stuff fun to, to talk about. I don't think that it, I don't think that you, you you have a very great distinction about uh, say a movie that's a, that's a good movie and an enjoyable movie, and that they're different things, right? An enjoyable movie movie can be bad uh a, a well-written uh a good a, give me the distinction here i'm tripping over my words an enjoyable movie can be bad a good movie can be not enjoyable right exactly so i agree with that having said that even as i was watching i loved the ending i loved the last episode i think that the last episode of lost is a great ending for the last season of lost i don't think the last season of lost is a good ending for the show 
and and here here's and I've so I I even felt that a little bit at the time. Like I said, I didn't have my critical faculties as as much as I do now. But there was something I enjoyed it watching it. But there was something a little bit less good about the last season. I finally got the words for it years later from uh, Rotten Tomatoes. You're familiar with this website, right? Who isn't? Yeah, they give a, a, it's not actually an aggregate rating. It's a, a lot of people don't know this, but the percentage isn't an average score. It's it's a it's a score of what percentage of critics gave it a positive review, right? Metacritic does the average score. Rotten Tomatoes is, so, so let me read you the Rotten Tomatoes scores for each season of Lost, right? Season one, 94%. Season two, 100%. Season three, 71%. Significant drop. Season four, 88%. Season five, 90 percent. And I will defend season five, by the way, when a lot of people don't. The time travel season. I fucking love that shit. I think Lost was amazing right up until then. Season six, the lowest rated, 68 percent, right? Only a little bit below season three, funny enough. The, so the critics consensus, each, each season has a critics consensus. Each movie has one on Rotten Tomatoes. It sort of like sums up the general feeling of critics towards it, right? I'm not going to read them for every season, but let me read you the critics consensus for season six. Lost's shift in central mythology won't satisfy all viewers, but persistent fans will find solace in the show's strong performances and continued dedication to its themes. And I think that sums it up perfectly there, right? A shift in the central mythology. That was the issue I had with Lost. They introduced this Jacob shit at the end. And it kind of just comes out of nowhere and is not really affected by a lot that happens early on in the show. They retrofit a lot of the stuff early on in the show to to fit into it. But you can tell, yeah, but they did not plan this shit from the start, right? And I think that's wonderful. So I think Lost, like it says here, you know, strong performances, continued dedication to its themes. I agree. The character work is strong right up until the end. The, the You know, like the emotional weight of the ending and the, the fact that it, the ending is really, especially the last episode, is really a, a comment on what was important about the show itself, which is the characters, right? They all find each other in the end in this sort of flash sideways afterlife thing, major spoilers, right? But but it but the fact is that the whole Jacob thing, especially that episode across the sea, the third last episode, I think, where it just backloads all the fucking mythology into one episode, it, it's it's very unsatisfying. It's something I've seen in only a handful of uh various visual media which is right at the very end something brand new is pulled out of nowhere and the audience is told this is the most important thing yeah. in the mythos that's it i'm like what that's is it. it funny enough jj abrams has a pension for that like the the fucking the newer what do you call them, the sequel trilogy of star wars like that last one and I, I i will defend the last jedi i know a lot of people didn't like that i think there were some issues with the writing but like it's a good movie the last one was fucking nonsense because he just <laughs> pulled all this shit out like to try it first of all he absolutely capitulated to the toxicity of the fan base who didn't like the last jedi he went he went back on everything and i thought that was spineless but second of all he like like have you seen the the last star wars movie from the sequel trilogy i haven't seen any of the sequel trilogy there, it's not. It's it's like Game of Thrones. It's not worth watching because the ending is so bad. Can I spoil a little bit for you? Please go right ahead and, and skip ahead fifteen seconds if you don't want the last Star Wars movie spoiled. But Emperor Emperor Palpatine comes back. He just comes what? back to life in the last one. No indication that this is going to happen in episode uh, fucking uh, seven or eight. But J.J. Abrams is like, uh, I don't know what to do with this. Fuck it. Bring Palpatine back. That's that, that's not I don't think that Jacob and the Man of Black is as offensively stupid as that. But it is a, it is a very J.J. Abrams esque sort of just throw something in at the end. You know, it's kind of like. I have a thought that's more emotion than words, if, <laughs> if, if that makes any sense. <laughs> but when it came to the man in black and Jacob to talk about them specifically, mm. it's like coming into season six, the writers went back and reviewed all the previous five seasons and thought, OK, what are some of the biggest themes that already run throughout these that we can now yeah. make into something big? And the, the the idea of opposites, black and white, good and evil, is like the most central theme in any movie mm-hmm. or TV show. So they're like, okay, well, let's create personifications for for good and evil and have them be puppet masters playing chess against each other, essentially. Yeah. These are people. I mean, okay. 
Yeah, there was just something that felt a little bit lazy about it, and something that, or not even lazy, but just like they 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 were they had to clean the house before the parents got home, and they swept most stuff under the rug. That was it, right? Like narratively speaking. Uh, yeah. So I, I, you know, I wasn't expecting to talk about Lost that much in in this episode, but there you go. Any anything else to add before we uh, move on? No. All right, so let's talk future lost the plot, Ada. So, so we, we discussed this through voice notes as we're wont to do uh, on WhatsApp a couple of weeks ago. And you laid out sort of a three-pronged like uh, options, you know, for, for the podcast going forward. Okay, yeah. I had envisioned three possibilities, regardless of how likely they are to happen. And mm-hmm. I think what you and I have decided is... We're going to do what we do best, which is abdicate all responsibility of <laughs> making this decision and put it onto somebody else, which yeah. is going to be Ooh, you, baby. listeners, <laughs> Paul and Jerry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say we're going to put it to a vote once we've tallied both of them. <laughs> we'll, uh... No, but yeah. So, so, so I think it, it all go on the plan in the episode description of this episode that you're listening to. There should be a, a survey. Monkey is probably the best place to do this, right? I was thinking Twitter originally, but not everyone's on Twitter, um, especially and, these and, days. Yeah, and the and the fucking uh, jizz, the bots will get us on Twitter. You know, Musk has done nothing to clear them up. They're our biggest audience. You know that, right? The bots. <laughs> But anyway, go on. Yeah, so so we're going to put up a survey monkey thing. I uh, should be set a deadline for a vote. Let's say 28th of February. Cool, 28th of February. And I'll like if if we end up releasing this episode after that, which is unlikely, I'll just drop in a Microsoft Sam there. <laughs> like uh, <laughs> let's say the deadline for the vote is March 31st. <laughs> um uh yeah, so so we're going to put up a poll. We we see this as going one of three ways, right? Option A is that we continue lost the plot at least till the end of season two on a sort of ad hoc basis, which is the way you described it. Basically, we're not going to be able... You, you also described this as... I thought this was a great great way to put it. We've always held Lost the Plot to a very high standard, which is something that I, I wanted to do going in. You know, we edit it. We spend a lot of time editing it. We do research and everything. Basically, we want to do a more half-assed version of that. I don't think the quality will drop significantly. It's just the fucking release times. That was another thing we held ourselves yeah. to, right? A, a strict release schedule. Option A will be Lost the Plot continues to cover Lost as we did, but we might have like one episode a month. We might have one episode whenever the fuck we feel like it. Our schedules are very difficult. Maybe we'll record a bunch of them and then release them like one week after another, but like not until they're all edited. So it could be fucking a year between seasons. That's option one. Option two, this is the last episode of Lost the Plot. You can vote for this and humble us. We bow out now. We let it die uh we're never coming back i guess if that option does win we will probably announce it somehow keep an eye on the socials yeah but you know there's i i don't i wouldn't blame anyone for for voting for that you know if you came here for regular lost content and you feel like we shouldn't do it anymore hey we'd appreciate being given the break you know so that's option b option c uh and 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 it's funny let me just say in advance that my ma doesn't really care for the lost content of this podcast. And she's always said, you and Ado should just have a podcast where you just talk. Cause I like the bits where you're just talking about things that aren't lost. And from <laughs> all of the other like friends and family members who've listened to our podcast and tune out as soon as we get to the lost content, <laughs> yeah. that sentiment is echoed among a few people. Yeah. And I, my answer to that has always been like, why would we assume that anyone wants to listen to that? Do you know what I mean? Like, like we have to, we, we, we have, we've started this podcast with the intention that we will attract people who are into Lost, right? And if people who don't like Lost listen to it, that's fine. You know, it's usually our friends and family. Right. Having said that, the third option is that uh, we return for, uh, with a, just a monthly episode where we just talk shite. A monthly shite talk between the two of us. The, the the thinking behind this was that it, you know, it helps us to keep in touch as friends. We have a basically we let you in on our monthly phone call. Other than we will probably will speak about deeply personal things before we start rolling. But you know, like we'll we'll catch up. We'll talk about current events. <laughs> Even saying that makes me uncomfortable. Like, why the fuck would anyone care what we have to say about current events? But uh, you know, if you, if you kind of like the banter and you'd you'd like to continue hearing us talk about things that aren't lost, uh, I I guess we'll probably post the lost plot feed still, just because it's the easiest way to reach listeners still. 
Yeah, because I mean, Lost the Plot is still a good title for a, a podcast like that. It's not necessarily Lost so, yeah. related, but Lost the Plot is an expression that we do use quite a lot here in this country. And also, it's not to say that we will never talk about Lost again. It's almost un- unavoidable considering the basis of our podcast but like yeah oh, like yeah. the third 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 option is just two white guys talking the the old classic the old faithful podcast format <laughs> uh so those are the options we'll, we'll put up a survey monkey it should be linked in the in the bio of this episode uh let us know what you wanted and and vote for what you would genuinely think you would listen to uh not what you think other people would want or what we would want because I'm, I'm i'd be happy with any of those if anybody is wondering why we would be able to do a monthly shite talk episode, but not a monthly lost episode, that would be ad hoc. And um, the reason is because a lot of work goes be- goes on behind the scenes mm-hmm. with actually doing this lot lost podcast. I mean, we have to watch the episode, research the episode every week. We have to write up notes on it. Um, because of the length of each episode of Lost, recording time of a raw audio file for one of these episodes is like minimum. What would you say, Dave? Three hours long? Three hours usually, yeah. And then we have to go and edit every single second of that, taking out every breath, sniffle, cough, <laughs> fart, siren in the background, <laughs> every um, uh, like, and fi- every other filler word. Yeah. That Lost podcast is to such a high standard that if we're going to keep doing that, we're going to maintain that same quality. We don't want mm-hmm. to dip in quality. But yeah. if we are going to, you know, as I said at the beginning, old yeller this shit, and <laughs> this is going to be the final episode of that, then going forward, it's going to be a different beast entirely. Yeah, monthly podcast. Based on what you said, it'll be a much less pleasant listening experience because we'll be <laughs> sniffling and farting. <laughs> ah, no, maybe maybe a little bit of light editing. but No, maybe. of course, of course. There'll be, there'll be minimal edits made. Um, so those are our options. Please do vote in the poll. You have until February 28th, and we appreciate your input. Also, if anybody has any suggestions for baby names, feel free to get in touch with the Lost the Plot socials. I still monitor those. Yeah, and we will. We've, we'll continue to monitor them, I guess. I also want to make a promise to the listeners now that uh, that we haven't discussed off air, but it just occurred to me. We have from the uh, from the first half of season two and and the end of season one, we have racked up some bloopers and outtakes. We did a bloopers and outtakes episode last season. Do you want to on air commit right now to regardless of the outcome of this poll, we will release one more bloopers and outtakes episode? I would love to commit to that. With the footnote that it could be a while. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I'm not, I'm not saying we commit to a release date, just that we commit to releasing it. Okay, so we'll have that as well because that the content's <laughs> too good to keep to ourselves. <laughs> yeah, that that the bloopers and outtakes episode was the best received episode of last season. Of it's season my favorite. One. It's my, I, yeah, me too. I, it's I it's I I laugh out loud every time. I, like whatever I listen to it. Still, I've listened to it maybe two or three times and. It's some just, good shit. You choking on like, <laughs> I think the very first blooper is you like getting caught mid sentence and going. Oh. I, th- I think I tried to inhale my coffee or something. <laughs> it gets me every time. Uh, so I see. Yeah, we'll commit to that. I guess if I guess if the the option B in the poll of just let it die. Uh, wins, then we can announce that in that bloopers episode. If 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 anybody's feeling like they don't want to be mean by telling us to let it die, trust me, it's the easiest option for both Dave and I. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, we're, we're like we're happy to go with either of these options. That's why we're presenting these three options. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If we if we wanted to not stop, we would not have stopping as an option. We're just okay with stopping or going in some other capacity right uh, also you know we can hijack the feed i don't know if if if, if ever we start another podcast and we want to shamelessly advertise it on this feed uh we can absolutely do that my, I've, I've been talking to my friend about starting another podcast but i really don't think i have time to be honest uh but we'll see you know watch this space absolutely keep an eye out all right well i got nothing else to say Adolf. do you have anything else yes i want to make a public address to a mr Ronan Keating and let you know you're getting off scot free, lad. <laughs> is this a is this a callback? It's a callback to the very opening of our very first episode where I called him out to come on our podcast so I could insult him. Yeah, well, he he's not off the hook yet. Put it that way. Oh, he can rest easy when one of you is dead. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no more from me. I think I've said enough. 
Uh, I think I think we've both said enough. <laughs> Fucking thirty odd episodes of this. <laughs> hey, just... it's been a good run, man. It has. I've I've really enjoyed this. This 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 uh this podcast has really given my life some. Uh, not that I didn't have any meaning in it beforehand, but the meaning it's brought me has been has been very valuable to me and the uh, excuse to spend time with yourself. And I'm I'm super happy and super excited for you to be a dad. And you know, if the, it, it's going to be fun to hear reports on that if we do continue this in some capacity. So uh, maybe don't don't let that sway your vote. But um, yeah, you know, it's it's been an honor serving with you. Likewise, and thank you. To bo- thank you to the two listeners for for sticking with us this whole time. <laughs> we we do appreciate it, uh, and and everyone who has listened and interacted with the show. And uh, yeah, you, you're, you, it all it means an awful lot to us. You have a special place in our hearts. A special shout out and thanks as well to Lost in My Forties. Those guys have been incredible. Where would we be without giving a special yeah, thanks to Lacey absolutely. and Ben and the, and the gang? I was on a recent episode. I don't think it comes out for another while. Uh, we covered the season three episode expose, and it was a lot of fun. Oh, classic! They've they've also given myself and yourself an open invite because they know they knew that our podcast was winding down. They've given us an open invite to appear on any episode. So I think I might hop on for the constant when they covered in season four. Oh, <gasps> and if I should be available at that time, I would love to make it as well. Uh, who doesn't mm. love the constant? Uh. The, the the goat the goat episode that'll do it from us here at lost the plot don't email us at lost the plot lads at gmail.com don't <laughs> no i'm just kidding vote on our poll first and foremost uh, and if you have any follow-up thoughts you can absolutely send them to us that they, they, they will be seen and uh thanks again for everything edo it's been a pleasure and remember guys you haven't lost anything I'm gonna cry until you've lost the plot good night good night is produced by Dave and I. Artwork by Jimmy Purcell of BeanBetterComic.com. Music by Noel Brennan of No Exit. Check out No Exit wherever you stream your music. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at LostThePotLads or email us at LostThePotLads at gmail.com. Mm-hmm.